Hello, everybody, and welcome to another OpenShift Commons briefing. This time, we're going to talk about some of um, my favorite things, uh, one of which is operators and data portability. And we have with us um, Josh Mintz, Will Hawley, and Mike Breslin, all from IBM. And they're going to talk about using the Apache Cloud DB operator for data portability. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves. There's a bit of a demo here. At the end of this session, we'll have time for um, Q&A. So if you want to ask questions in the chat, please do so. And as always, we will um, post this video and the slides up on OpenShift.com's blog and um, up on our YouTube channel within a day or so. So with that, Josh, take it away and um, tell us all about Apache Cloud DB. Thank you, Diane. Hi, everyone. My name is Josh Mintz. I'm a product manager at IBM Cloud. I sit in Boston alongside Mike Breslin. We're also uh, joined by Will Hawley from the UK. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the operator for Apache CouchDB. Uh, the whole team uh, that's here is part of the organization that delivers IBM Cloud, which is a uh, database as a service in the IBM Cloud. That database as a service is built on Apache CouchDB. And uh, we took that experience uh, running CouchDB at scale in uh, a public cloud environment, and we wanted to transform that into the operator paradigm so people could take our lessons learned and easily allow them to, uh, to run it in their own OpenShift cluster. Apologize if you hear any squeaking. Um, with the work from home going on, I'm here with my 16-week-old puppy that has uh, just gotten a new toy. She's, she's very cute, I promise. Uh, so uh, thank you in advance for, for understanding. So uh, a little picture to go to go with the names. Uh, you can also get a picture of Mike on here later. Beautiful face. Um, so there's Will and I. If you have any questions or concerns uh, about the presentation or want to talk to us, we, we hang out in the Apache CouchDB Slack. I have a link at the end of the presentation to, to join us there. Um, so we're, we're definitely down to, to talk on Slack or talk on the phone or talk on the, the open source uh, at any time. We're here to help. Uh, so before going to the operator, I just want to give like a, a bit of background, uh, i.e. Why, why you should trust our opinion, the, the opinionated design that goes into the operator pattern, right? Um, so at IBM Cloud, we're the, the data backbone of the IBM Cloud across 50 data centers all over the world. We have petabytes upon petabytes of data under management. Uh, and again, Cloud is at its core, uh, you know, code, uh, CouchDB, and, you know, part of us running it as a service is the years of experience that we have, um, you know, operating, monitoring, and scaling these systems for, for hyperscale use cases. Um, it's fully compatible with Apache CouchDB. There's some, you know, API differences that you might expect in sort of a public cloud versus a, a piece of software you'd run uh, on a server or a Raspberry Pi, um, but you can you know use them interchangeably for for the most part. And we have there's lots of information on the web about you know the, the minor differences between them. So I want to instead of focusing about cloud, uh, I want to focus on Apache CouchDB today, and we're going to talk about the operator and do a little bit of a, a live demo from Will. Uh, but before we get into that, I just want to cover the, the basic high-level feature set that you, you get when you use Apache CouchDB. And uh, for people that have been around the database community for the last decade, uh, CouchDB was one of the you know, first NoSQL data stores to really um, you know, carry that movement forward, right? CouchDB and MongoDB were, were very popular uh, a number of years ago, and CouchDB has still continued to improve and become uh, even more reliable and be even more feature-rich. Uh, so it was still there under the the Apache organization as a you know an open source project governed by that that PMC and those uh, those standards. So at a high level, it's a JSON document store with an HTTP API. So it speaks the language of the web uh, for very ease of use for web and mobile application development. It places a premium on data durability. So it uses um, you know structures and paradigms for in you know the way it sets up the clusters and how it deals with crash failures to make sure that we're focusing on you know, keeping the, the gold of the database, the data, as safe and durable as possible. In CouchDB 2.0 and 3.0, uh, it uses multi-master clustering. So it's kind of a master-master architecture that allows you to uh, scale up and out very easily. You know, start with one node and add another and add another, add another. Uh, a similar paradigm would be like Apache Cassandra. 
the uh, other best part about CouchDB is its ability to sync data. So uh, there's this thing called the CouchDB replication protocol, and it allows you to very easily move data wherever you need it to go, whether it's in public cloud, on a, you know, a, a store or a, a point of sale device at the edge or an oil rig out in, uh, out in the middle of the ocean, as long as there's internet connectivity. Um, you'll be allowed to do things like active active setups with data replication. You can go single direction or bi-directionally um, between regions and between locations like your private data center or public cloud. It also has a continuous changes feed, which is uh, useful for sort of the venting off changes in the database. And uh, CouchDB 3.0 has a full integration with a, a full text search um, sort of component, which is Lucene under the covers. Um, so you don't have to kind of parse data off that you want to do searching on or faceting on um, to another engine and try and keep those states synchronous. You can just kind of use Lucene as you would want to um, through the CouchDB API. It's also API compatible with PouchDB, uh, which Will is very familiar with. So if we have folks on the call that want to talk more about that, uh, I'm sure he'd be happy and interested to answer any questions there. It's a, a software for uh, running sort of um, the CouchDB protocol uh, on mobile apps or well, small devices. Uh, RxDB is kind of a, a newcomer to the space. Uh, it is for JavaScript applications. Uh, think running something on your phone as well. Uh, it's also API compatible with Pouch, uh, CouchDB, and Cloudant. And lastly, as we discussed earlier, IBM Cloudant is compatible with Apache CouchDB. A lot of the folks I work with uh, are also contributors to the open source projects. Uh, some are on the PMC. And uh, it's a it's an awesome community, and we we'd love for people to come say hi, learn more. If you're interested in sort of joining the fold and helping develop uh, Apache CouchDB, I'm sure there's a, a few people in the community that would love to help steward your uh, involvement or answer any questions you may have. Uh, one of the last cool things about CouchDB is it scales down to small devices uh, like Raspberry Pis, but also we run CouchDB, e.g., Cloudant. Um, as databases in the public cloud that have many, many terabytes in them um, per instance. So it scales up and down very nicely. Uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to, to pause me throughout the session. I know people drop in, drop out. So uh, no problem at all if you need me to cover something or go back. Uh, one of the, the cool things that you can do with Apache CouchDB and Cloudant because uh, of that data replication protocol is sort of this open hybrid multi-cloud architecture. And I, I recognize the jargon there, but it's pretty descriptive for what we're actually uh, trying to trying to deliver and what we see as a, a common use case for people we work with. Um, and that's partially why we, we went and did the development on the operator for Apache CouchDB to help take what we learned in the public cloud and allow people to use that knowledge through the operator framework on OpenShift wherever they want to run. So, um, CouchDB's strong replication protocol allows you to, for example, run uh, the operator for Apache CouchDB uh, on an on-premise OpenShift cluster in your own data center. And then if you punch the right holes in your firewall and do all the IP whitelisting, um, because uh, if the CISO is listening, I'm sure they, they would want everyone to do that, um, then you can easily just kind of replicate bi-directionally or one way to any other environment. So that might be a managed database as a service cloud in, on the IBM cloud where you don't really have to worry about running the environment. You just pay for provision throughput and off you go. Um, and then you can also like, build your apps on OpenShift as well in the IBM cloud because we have a, uh, a managed OpenShift offering there as well. And then you can take that data that's been replicated to the IBM cloud and you could also replicate it over to Azure. Let's say you have a footprint in Azure where you're running Red Hat OpenShift and you want to use the operator pattern again. Uh, so basically what we want to do is, you know, let people uh, get their data wherever they need it to be. We are big believers in Kubernetes at IBM and in OpenShift, and those help dramatically with application portability. Uh, one of the things that we've seen a, a problem for our customers is data portability. So you can move the application now seamlessly between clouds, but it's not super easy to move the data. Uh, we feel strongly that Apache CouchDB as a technology is, is well suited for that, given its data sync technology and the fact that it's open source under the Apache Foundation. And if you'd like to use it as a managed service in the public cloud, it's there under IBM Cloud. But if you want our expertise in the operator pattern, feel free to, to use the operator for Apache CouchDB. The, the more the merrier here. Uh, 
one kind of finer implementation of this sort of use case uh, is something we see uh, in the Apache CouchDB community uh, around, you know, sort of deploying it for retail use cases. Uh, just as sort of, you know, an execution or uh, drilling down into how you might actually use this uh, in your day-to-day -day jobs. Um, so you might be running Apache CouchDB in the cloud. Let's say you have stores all over your uh, your continent, whether it's the U.S. or Europe, and you, you need to replicate data from the cloud into those stores, or there's devices at those stores that need to get data from the cloud. And you want to make sure that you're able to do that um, even when there's not any internet connectivity, which CouchDB does very well. It's able to sort of understand that they've, it's lost internet connectivity, and when it comes back up, it's able to resume replication and um, carry on like there hasn't been much that's happened to the, the network infrastructure. So what you can do is sort of run it in the public cloud or anywhere you want and replicate that data to your stores where you might also be running Apache CouchDB, and at those stores that you then may be able to um, if you want, replicate them to like point of sale devices, whether it's like maybe an Android phone or an iPad, uh, using something like PouchDB running on the devices, which speaks the Apache CouchDB replication protocol. So uh, if there's any questions on that, I, I can pause. Um, hopefully that was sort of a, a useful use case for you to help couch, no pun intended, uh, how you might use this technology. Uh, and with that, I will pass it all along to Will for what you're probably all here for, the, the demo and how to get it going and used in production. So, Will, you want to add anything or take it away? Yeah, thanks, Josh. Um, so I haven't got any slides. I'm going to I'm going to demo the operator, but I was just going to talk a little bit about more about CouchDB. Um, so one of the well, there are, there are a few nice things about CouchDB that make it well suited to deployment in in Kubernetes. So as Josh mentioned that one of the kind of big things is that it's um, you interact with CouchDB entirely through its HTTP API. Um, so exposing the database, load balancing um, over database instances, um, routing to the database um, is all um, fairly kind of straightforward because Kubernetes and HTTP applications are a very common um, use case for Kubernetes. Um, Data durability story is another one that makes it well suited because um, CouchDB uses a um, copy on write storage engine, which is extremely fault tolerant. Um, so as long as you've got a POSIX compatible um, storage backend, you can basically, uh, it, it's, it's very tolerant to database instances just um, being stopped abruptly. Um, being And so it's easy, it copes well with check the Kubernetes schedule and moving things around. Um, uh, so that that also massively simplifies the the deployment of this. The main kind of weak points in in CouchDB historically, um, especially when it comes to clustering, have been around the setup and administration. Um, so the our, our kind of approach to the CouchDB operator was really to focus on that, try and make it as easy as possible to set up clustered CouchDB instance using the configuration um, kind of best practices that we've learned at cloud and over the last 10 years or so. Um, so with that background, I'm going to share my screen and just look through drawing the operator on, um, on OpenShift. Okay. Um, so I guess the first thing is, uh, where can you get the operator from? Um, and the operator is published to two locations. So um, if you're not using OpenShift 4, um, you can go to operatorhub.io uh, and install the operator. Um, so that will work with vanilla uh, upstream Kubernetes, or it will work with OpenShift 3, um, and you install OLM directly. Um, it's also a, a Red Hat certified operator. So if you go into um, into OpenShift, if you're on OCP4, um, you can go into the operator catalog in OCP directly uh, and then find the capture B operator here. I just installed it in a new project called CouchDB Demo. 
if I go here, and we'll see it has installed a number of custom resource types. The main uh, one to be, well, the only one that you care about really as a user is this CouchDB cluster resource. These other resources are internal resources that the operator uses, um, and we'll see those uh, as we as we go through the demo. Um, but they're essentially the CouchDB cluster resource is the only thing that you as a user would interact with. So I'll create an instance. Um, and this has just filled out some of the kind of basic um, defaults. So just um, CPU per CouchDB node, disk per CouchDB node. Storage class, I'm going to leave empty for now, which just uses ephemeral storage. But in production, you'd expect to specify some persistent storage depending on your environment. Um, I'm going to specify a one node cluster because this OpenShift deployment is on my laptop using code ready containers and there's only one uh, worker node available. Um, the default configuration of the operator is to only allow one CouchDB node per OpenShift worker or Kubernetes worker. Um, so I could I wouldn't be able to if I try and try and uh, have a three node CouchDB cluster, it will fail to deploy. You can override that using a developer, um, a dev mode flag. Um, so for development use cases where you want to try a three node cluster, um, particularly because some of the consistency properties in CouchDB differ between single node deployments and multi node deployments, um, you can do that. Um, but in production, the default is that we will try and spread the nodes across um, workers using anti affinity rules. So I'll create that. Um, and that's going to go off. And create my CacheView cluster. Um, so, under the hood, what that's going to do is create a resource called a formation, um, which is the piece that does the real work. That's a pattern that's extracted from um, our IBM Cloud database offerings, which use Kubernetes extensively. Um, so, the CacheView cluster is actually just a, a thin wrapper over over all of these other resources. Um, and the formation is the thing that does the work. Um, if I go into my CouchDB cluster, um, you'll see, we look at the YAML here. Um, we see that it's got a formation generation, which is basically the generation of the formation that's being created. And this observed generation will get updated as the formation is expanded into its its sub resources. So when these two numbers, when when observed generation equals two then it means that the formation is fully representative of the CouchDB cluster resource here. Um, it takes a little while to go and flesh everything out. Um, so if I go into the pods view, we'll see that it's created a CouchDB pod here. Um, and that's going to take a little while to initialize. Uh, it will also create um, a secret for my CouchDB cluster. Um, the operator will generate cluster-wide secrets, which is um, typically a pain point when using tools like Helm to deploy a CouchDB cluster, because there are certain secrets that need to be unique but per CouchDB cluster, but they need to be the same on every database node within a cluster. Um, so the operator generates those for you um, and ensures that they're synchronized across all instances, all, all pods that are um, database nodes. And we have a similar thing with the config map. So if I go into the config map, um, it's generated um, some of the, those common configuration options, um, which need to be uh, propagated across all nodes in the cluster. If I go to the secrets. Um, so you'll see I've got like an admin password that's uh, and an auth secret um, and a cookie, which is used to communicate across CacheDB nodes in the cluster. Hopefully that pod has now come up. Um, so you can have a look at the pod. Um, the pod has two containers in it. It's got the CouchDB node. It's also got a sidecar container, which is part, or which is um, essentially a, an agent for the operator. So the sidecar container is waiting for instructions for, from the operator, um, and then it executes those against the CouchDB database node, which allows us to run rich cluster-wide operations 
Um, so things like coordinating upgrades where maybe you have to stop all the instances of the database, run some commands, and then restart them all. That pattern is what, what allows us to do that. If I go into networking, I can see that it will have created me a cluster IP service. So the, it's got an internal service here, which you can ignore, but it's got this cluster IP um, service here. Um, it's also integrated with the OpenShift service certificates. So it will have, um, it's exposing a, an HTTP service on port 443, which is using those OpenShift certificates. So it will be um, able to be validated by any, any clients within the OpenShift cluster. Um, the other neat thing with that is that it makes it very easy to expose to the outside world if you want to. So um, I can go in and create a route. Um, we'll catch DB. I'll catch DB. And select my service here. It's 443. And I'm going to secure the route with re encrypting and create that. Insecure traffic will redirect it. So that's created, created me a route that I can use directly from outside of the OpenShift cluster. I launch that. It's going to give me a warning because I'm running code ready containers, so it's um, it's using a self signed certificate. But I can go past that, and it's given me my CatchDB instance. The base URL for CatchDB is uh, it's just a JSON endpoint. So if I go to the utils endpoint, that will give me the dashboard. And here's my CouchDB. I uh, can log in with the credentials which uh, we specified when we created our CouchDB cluster uh, resource. I'll log in. And you can see it's created a couple of system databases, the replicator and the users database. Um, I'm not going to fully kind of go through the dashboard, but um, we can see from here that um, set, the CatchDB says it's set up, it's configured for production, production usage as a clustered node. Um, if we go to the configuration, um, we can see um, all of the configuration options in CatchDB that the operator has set up for us. Um, and we're basically ready to replicate data. Now, I, so as a kind of Follow on from the use case that Josh was uh, was talking through earlier. Um, I thought it'd be good to show how we can replicate uh, between essentially a private cloud, which is my laptop, and uh, a public cloud instance. So I've got an, an OpenShift instance deployed to IBM Cloud as well, which also runs a CouchDB. Um, so I can show you how to replicate between the two. Um, if I launch my IBM Cloud. Lovely URL, uh, OpenShift. It's here. There's a OCP4 as well, and I've got a root a CouchDB instance somewhere here. So, got networking roots. Here is my CouchDB. So same thing. If I go to the base URL, it's JSON, but if I can log in. And I've got just a demo database here, which is um, which is a movies database. Um, so if I run a quick query here, it's, uh, moon, and I can replicate that to my local CouchDB. So in my local CouchDB, I will set up a replication. So the source is a remote database. This one that I just saw, so movies demo. And authenticate with my admin password, which you probably shouldn't do in production, but it's fine for a demo. Um, and I'm going to create, ask it to create me a new local database for movies demo as well. And I'm going to set this up to run continuously. So this database will continuously sync using HTTP over the internet. 
Now I have to run this replication from my local deployment because my local deployment, whilst it, it um, can pull data from the internet, it's not exposed to the internet directly. So I wouldn't be able to access this capture the instance um, externally outside of my, my network here. I'll start that replication. Um, and that should go off and pull all that data from the um, OpenShift deployed CouchDB in, the, in IBM Cloud. Let me see if I go here. So you see it's started. It's created a movies demo database, and it's going to slowly populate that. So we're up to, what, 1314. Four. So the, this uh, CouchDB instance in OpenShift is hosted in Dallas. Uh, and I'm in the UK, so it's probably going to take a little while just to replicate that over. Um, but the other part of replication that's nice, so a, a CouchDB replication by its nature is one directional. So this is just pulling data from that external uh, CouchDB instance hosted in the cloud. If I want, I can also make a, a second replication to make it bi-directional. So I'll take that source, and I'm going to make the source my local movies database. The target can be that existing remote database. And that's continuous as well. So. That's basically how you would configure an active-active deployment across multiple clouds or multiple regions um, within the same cloud. So bidirectional replication, um, one that pulls data and one that pushes data. So here, I've got, I think I've fully populated my um, my database here. But if I if I run a search here, let's say um, same one, got my Anna Kendrick search. Um, now, if I add another document here, um, the, uh, so add Bowls World Tour, that's what my kids are watching. Save, and then shortly, if I go to my cloud deployed one, it's, you see it's just turned up there. Equally, if I go and add one in my cloud deployed, um, deployed CouchDB, so I'll add Frozen 2, create that. Um, now, should be able to do search here. There we go, Frozen 2 is turned up. Um, so that's basically basically it. It's that simple to deploy CouchDB in multiple clouds, and th these these OpenShift instances could be in obviously in IBM Cloud. It could be in AWS or GCP or your own machines, as as I've done in my demo. It's that straightforward. That was awesome, Will. Thank you. So I have a question. Uh, hi, this is uh, Shanna. Um, when you said for continuously sync or replicate, uh, what are the time interval in between, or it just recognize if there's a new data and just automatically replicate, or how how does that what does that mean for like you know when when we do incremental replications like per day or but you, when you say continue means what's the context around that so there's there's a few different ways you can do it depending on what your requirements are and <clears throat> sorry there's a few different ways you can do it depending on what your requirements are for latency so mm -hmm. CouchDB does support a fully continuous replication um, where it basically maintains a connection over HTTP um it's it's a sort of uh, long running re long running request um so any data that gets added on one side will will 
as quickly as HTTP works <laughs> um, get transferred. But it, a lot of it will depend on the load that mm -hmm. your database is under, right, and how many writes it's processing. Um, you can also, uh, another way of doing it would be to schedule replications. Um, so you'd have to do that programmatically, have a have something that replicates, say, um, at certain times of the day or or just periodically. If, if the data isn't changing that, that frequently, that, right. that's kind of a way to do it with less load on the cluster. Um, but probably the, the continuous replication is the most common way to do it. I see. OK, I'm thinking on. Um... Like if we're doing, if an application is doing active active on multiple cluster, how are we guarantee the the data integrity on both end while right. the transactions is going, and then we're doing copying the data. That's all. Right. So yeah, yeah the replication isn't isn't transactional in that sense that you won't. I mean, CouchDB doesn't have um, have transactions anyway in that in that sense. So um the, there are sort of there are patterns you can use to get close to it um but ultimately it, the way that most people work around that is to just have their own um monitoring that will test that you know you could you could have a document that gets updated say once a minute on one side and then you can test that that has propagated on the other side to figure out what the lag is um that kind of thing but if you need a hard guarantee that the data is replicated right. across regions, but that is um, difficult with with CouchDB. The way right. that I've seen it done before is to instead of using replication for that, actually just have your application make writes to two different databases at the same time. Um, the what what CouchDB does do for you, and, and the CouchDB clusters that are deployed by the operator will do this, is that it maintains multiple replicas within the cluster. So you've you, you've already got three replicas of the data by default within your CouchDB cluster. So if you're deploying to a cloud or a, a, a an OpenShift cluster that has multiple fault zones, then your CouchDB nodes within the cluster will be placed across those fault zones, and it will attempt to distribute the replicas across them as well. Um, so you get some redundancy within a region or within a deployment anyway. And that that you get without having to do yeah. anything special in your application. And it's, it's the multi. Really nice. Yeah, we're really nice that you can easily replicate the way you had it. Um, very simple. Thank you. So, Will, I have a, a quick question. Um, if you're at the end of your demo, are you at yep. the end? Of your demo? Um, I know that you are here, that you were one of the people that wrote the operator itself for CouchDB. And I was wondering um, if you could talk a little bit about um, that process and any lessons that you learned or anything, um, you know, as you mentioned earlier, that it was an opinionated version of it, um, how, how that went. And um, if you could share. Yeah, that. so, um, I mean, really, the CouchDB operator is standing on the shoulders of giants internally in that we have been using operators at IBM for a long, long time to support our IBM cloud databases offering. Um, and part of the work for the CouchDB operator was to take the patterns that have been established in, in doing that work and bringing them into a framework that could be used for um, standalone deployments like this. Um, the main one that um, I sort of alluded to earlier was this idea of uh, an agent sidecar, which the operator can interact with. So every pod has this um, this service that sits on the side and understands how to um, coordinate rich operations across all of the components of the cluster. So the operator can essentially, we call it a recipe, but it will have a, a series of actions that it needs to perform to get to a, a state and can instruct the sidecar to perform that action on every replica of the of the database nodes. Um, and that the complexity of that depends on the database that you're deploying, but we've used that pattern successfully um, for things like Redis and Postgres and MySQL um, and MongoDB and, and now CouchDB as well. Um, our operator work largely predates 
um, the operator framework. So we don't use use that directly. And uh, I guess a lot of the work that we did for the Couch TV operator was trying to bridge the gap between what we have done for our internal needs and, and what is expected by the community and, and the sort of consistency of operators for uh, OpenShift and, and Kubernetes generally, generally through Operator Framework and Operator Hub. Um, but I think, um, like I say, that that pattern is the main kind of diff, sort of thing that I haven't seen that much in other operators, and sort of it's significantly different from things like a Helm-based operator, right? It's, um, yeah. it, allowing us to do those those kind of rich operations, the same thing on every every replica. Cool. Well, that's that's a good insight and, and, and interesting to hear how long that IBM's been already using the operator pattern. So I think it's 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 something that um, has been really useful and it, and it continues to evolve. Uh, so we well, thanks for the insights on the on that. Um, Joshua, did you have yep. anything else? I did. Yes, go one uh, one data point that people might find interesting is that we we use this pattern that that Will spoke of. Um, sort of standing on the shoulders of giants to run many tens of thousands of databases at IBM. So it has scaled extremely well for us and has been a, a good framework to deliver databases as a service for, for our team. So uh, with this presentation, I've also included a, a resources slide that links directly to the operator, the documentation for the operator for Apache CouchDB, uh, a short video that one of our colleagues put together uh, with a, a light board to describe what is Apache CouchDB and why you might want to use it, and also links for folks to uh, peruse the CouchDB website, uh, join us on Slack, or help contribute on GitHub. Uh, I'll also provide Diane uh, contact information for myself and Will.